yeah who wants to stay in the hospital okay everybody when they go to the hospital they want to come back okay um so they are actually the vulnerable groups because we cannot observe them we cannot follow up with them and they are free to do anything between for example from one appointment to another appointment so we have the responsibility actually to cater this group and to help them to prevent falls because i think for malaysians we like to learn it the hard way even though we know okay we, we give the education about falls and everything but unless you experience the fall you will not try to prevent it that's why maybe maybe we uh, the um, survey previously done where prof tan previously showed when the older persons have a fall it's hard for them to have the consecutive falls means yeah we likes to learn it the hard way but we cannot rely on that we need to wait them to falls first it's it's not ethical actually and it's not good because we know that falls can cause devastating impact for example even mortality so actually um before i start my phd i didn't really realize about the importance of falls actually the impact of falls on the older people and actually there is less literature in this aspect in the region including malaysia and also the southeast asia okay so this idea brings to for example i i think for me actually is a um is a break point when a scoping review about falls among all the people in southeast asia being published then we really understand actually in our context we mostly replicate international studies either in the observational studies or in the intervention studies we are not really looking into the unique aspect of our context and because of that it was found the intervention exercise is the most effective method because that's the mostly investigated in the southeast asia context including nation in but the multifactorial interventions warranted for more investigation because it involved lots of things for example the manpower the cost and then for example from the client side they need to meet with several professionals so this warranted for more um, investigation how about the other things for example the supplement the nutrition and about home modification for example these are mostly not investigated in our context especially in the mention context but from the um this scoping review we understand actually it's not only about health other factors also for example from the social factors economic factors diet and lifestyle also contributing towards falls and risks of falls if you look for example in this study in this scoping review it says about for example older people who are living alone have the higher chance actually to fall okay for example in thailand um, they have um, it's actually interconnected between economy and diet okay because the older people over there does not have lots of financial uh, capacity so they also not have able to feed themselves more than two times per day so that also actually makes them malnutrition and about lifestyle because we are not really uh, in the south east asia context we are not really appreciate physical activities even though we know exercise really contributes towards falls prevention but we actually appreciate social activities meeting with the family members going outside with the colleague with your friends meeting outside with your friends drinking at the mama shop for example and all the people also do the same thing okay but the assessment tool is another things okay 
to help to identify the older people who are at risk of falls, we need to evaluate them. So the currently used assessment tool mostly being done in clinical setting. And this again contributes to an issue for the community falls prevention and intervention. However, that study actually being published in 2017. And during that time, for me, I think there is lack of studies on this aspect and then a lack of awareness also, even among the researchers. Okay, However, just a recent um, search through the literature, it's interesting. Um, it has been found there are more interests being developed on the aspect of falls and older people in the community in the Southeast Asian region. And the most active countries in the Southeast Asian region is actually Thailand, followed by us, Malaysia, and also Singapore. So these three countries are actually the most active in either um, research and also practice in false prevention and intervention. Indonesia starts to emerge in this topic and also uh, Philippines, but the other countries not looking into it. Uh, for example, even though Brunei is one of the developed countries in Southeast Asia, but I don't know either they are really look into this because previously when we went to the Congress, yeah, they, they mentioned that they are looking into this, but how they cater in the community is another issue. Okay, so in the current knowledge, we found out the studies being done in Malaysia, okay, um, it's found that Indian ethnicity have the highest prevalence of falls compared to other ethnicities. Indian ethnicity reach until 30% compared to other ethnicities, for example, uh, the Malay only 19% or something like that, okay. So Indian are the highest. And then we found out also having chronic conditions, psychological issues and interruption in daily living activities increasing the chance for falls. Having chronic conditions actually is quite comparable between, for example, Malaysia, Thailand and also Indonesia. When I read this, um, for example, the condition arthritis emerged as a significant condition that contributes to a fall in these three countries, okay? And also the psychological issues, for example, um, being alone, okay, living alone and also depression, okay? The same theme emerged between these three countries, okay? Interruption in daily living activities. This can be including about independence in doing self-care and also sleep. Many of the older people, okay, uh, and this study is from Thailand actually, is found to have sleep problem. And this leads as become as significant factors to its falls. Okay. And from the scoping review, I found that not many interests available in the home hazards. But now the interest of home hazards starts to develop. Okay, one of it because yeah, I also do the studies on the home hazards. Okay, for um, Prof Tan also did a my face study where they include about the home hazards interven uh, intervention inside. Okay, but the interesting thing is again from Thailand, they have investigated where a person who have high Bartel index score means they are more independent in their daily living activities. Plus, when they have two or more hazards in their home, they tend to fall small. So it's very interesting that the dynamic interaction between the home hazards where if the persons can function small, means the persons can interact with the environments more frequent. And this actually can increase the risk of falls. But the how to say this um the focus or the observation of home hazards mostly looking into the physical aspect of the environment for example installing the grab rail for example uh, having the non-slip mat but 
we always miss actually about the interaction between a person's functions in the home environment. For example, even though we are doing um, a cabinet, okay, a top cabinet in the kitchen, okay, we use the standard guideline, okay, the Malaysian standard guideline to, uh, to build the kitchen cabinet, okay, but that guideline is a general guideline. It might or might not suitable depending on the individual anthropometrics. For example, if the older person is quite short, so we need a lower uh, install of kitchen cabinet. So this dynamic a uh, dynamic interaction always being missed. Okay, either either among the older person, the client, caregivers, or also among the healthcare practitioners. Okay, and family. Uh, there's a study also in Malaysia. Okay, our colleague also do it. Found out that family physicians are not aware about available screening tools for falls or risks of falls. Okay, there are over sixty percent of the family physicians are not aware about this, and over fifty percent are not routinely asked about falls or fear of falling. Okay. Why family physician being in the limelight here? Because family physician is the gatekeeper between the hospital and also the people in the community. They are the one who meet the people in the community first. And if they are not really aware about this, it become a very um, risky issue for the older person. Okay. Another thing is older persons, older people in Malaysia, also their family members consider falls as inevitable. Means they consider falls as normal, it's unavoidable, and it's part of life. Okay. And even they know that falls is dangerous, but they do not know how to prevent it. Okay. For example, when I did a qualitative study okay, with the, um, some of the uh, older people in the community, they say this to me, okay? When I go to the clinic or hospital, the, uh, when I ask, for example, do you get any advice about false prevention or intervention? They just say, when I go to the hospitals or clinic, I just receive a brief advice. So I ask for, for example, they said, for example, if they say you need to do home modification, okay, to reduce falls, but they do not explain what type of modification, how that modification can really prevent falls, and actually who we need prefer to do the modification. That's one thing. The second, they receive an advice, for example, you need to do exercise because it will improve your muscle strength. But there are no standard or specific exercise regime being taught to them. So that's one of the issues. Okay. And currently, the interest of falls not only focus about healthy older people in the community, but also the Older people with condition in the community, for example, dementia, Parkinson, Alzheimer, and also stroke. Okay, these people receive intervention in the hospital, but again, these people being receive intervention in general. Okay, it's not an issue about we preventing the falls. Okay, but the issue here is actually okay. Falls is not being considered as important outcome. Okay, because the thing is when I ask the professionals, healthcare professionals, okay, the therapists, do you really look into falls as one of the important aspects when you treat your patient? For example, stroke patient, okay, and they say, yeah, but it's not really important because we treat them to increase their muscle strength because we treat them to be more functional, independent in their activities of daily living. So this will indirectly 
um, help to overcome the false risks. And hopefully this will overcome false. This actually makes false become a very neglected aspect. Actually, false is very important and this is not being realized either by the client or the healthcare professionals. False actually can be a sign of or indicator factors. When I say the sign of means it can show when a person starts to have decrease in their functional activities, okay? So they have the tendency to fall. When they fall, actually it's uh, showing they have a decrease in their functional activities. It's a sign of. But it's also an indicator. Means if they start to have falls, they have the high chance to decrease more in their functional activities. So it actually falls is the middle point. Okay. It's become a cycle. Okay. Either become a dependent factors or independent factors. So it's very important actually to identify faults and investigate faults in a very um, structured manner. Means we need to record it either from the healthcare practitioners or from the older person or the clients. Okay. But one thing is about um, in community practice, okay, um, false prevention and intervention in the community is how to translate from what we ever, uh, whatever we teach in the clinic or hospital to the community when they return back to their home. It's like a linear um, means whatever we teach, we hope they can do it at home, but it's not. When we do uh, look into this, it's actually a very a rocky mountain journey actually, okay? Because when they when we left them, okay, after they finish with the clinics, they may or may not continue the exercise or whatever we train at home, okay? Study shows that older persons has poor adherence towards physical activity. It's around 70 to 90 percent not adhere with whatever we give in the clinics or hospital. That's why the previous presenter mentioned that if they come to the clinics, we can supervise them. It's a totally different environment. Now, when they go back to the community, it's a different story. Another thing is, for example, Whatever we use in the uh, equipment in the clinics may or may not available in the home. Okay. And there's an issue when we ask the client or the caregivers to buy the equipment. Okay. Some of the equipment, we need to think about some of the clients who are not really financially capable. And some of the children, actually, this is from my experience, they try to buy, for example, um, the stationary bicycle, okay? They try to buy for their parents, okay? Uh, uh, to teach them to do the exercise and everything. But then, they come back to me and they um, express their frustration, okay? Because that equipment has been abandoned. So again, if for healthcare practitioners, we really need to look into doing something that really involves minimal cost, okay but with maximal benefits and also minimal exhaustion if we do physical activity they will become tired so they that's why one of the reason they do not want to do it okay but if you do for example medical uh, review back okay polypharmacy so you, you reduce the medication it's easier okay so they can comply that better Okay, if you do, for example, home modification, also maybe a bit is a bit easier, but depends on the financial capacity. But once again, when we want to do the home modification, or uh, we need for, to do home assessment, and the problem is, we need to visit the house of the older person. When we want to visit, it involves time, and it involves cost, and also it involves about the activities or the uh, client they cannot go out 
um, they need to wait for you okay they may have to cancel their activities outside okay so these things we need to really consider when we want to transfer from clinical practice towards the community practice so we need to look at the gap it's like a train map okay so false is our center focus over there and currently we are really looking okay the studies okay or the practice really looking about exercise but here again it becomes a loop okay study about exercise everything we mentioned about the effectiveness we mentioned about its benefit but because it just a study they have the commitment over there okay when they involve in a study but when they are go back to the community that's why the false rate in even internationally is not really significantly reduced because it's just an inner loop when we do about the exercise and everything so we look at the other things we look at the home hazards home modification but what happened when we look at the home modification it's not a linear things because some studies mention that there is no association with false and some studies mention there are association with false even as previously mentioned in thailand recently they have conducted several studies on home environment on false and they found um, most of it found uh, a, a significant association but again it is a very subjective things okay the measurement may not capture a comprehensive understanding about the home hazards okay that's one of the issue being raised about the home hazards so it become like a bit of haywire okay there's a lot of junction either we reach to prevent the fall or not okay so we need to look at the other things for example the diet in malaysia our diet are very different compared to the international or western countries okay if you want to ask the older person to eat lots of protein for example it might be a bit difficult okay and this is from my experience also they like to eat rice more okay lots of rice and just a bit of side dish is okay okay so we need to look into this and how we can cater this but i will not touch this because i believe there are other um presenter will talk about this okay and we need to look into the cognitive aspect and also education there are two things older persons with the cognitive impairment or cognitive problem for example they have the marked cognitive impairment so this tend to uh, increase the risk of fallings okay and another things we need to educate both um, older persons and also the caregivers family members and it is a very difficult task because again they do not experience it yet when they experience usually they start to understand and they start to comply another things we need to look but it's quite a long journey for malaysia is from the financial aspect how the government or how the insurance uh, company or even the family members can spend their money okay to help prevent falls among the older person this aspect being a sensitive issue in malaysia because yeah spending money in something that we cannot see okay but study shows actually when you spend money in preventing falls you are actually saving lots of money compared even you are not spending anything for the falls prevention and intervention okay and doing the assessment actually for the time being we have a lots of standardized assessment and many of the standardized assessment starts to be um, applied and translated into the Malaysian context but again when the people go back to the community can they really evaluate themselves 
we need to think about this and how a very user-friendly, a very public-friendly assessment can be developed and can be used by the public or by the older person or by the family members to help identify the older persons as soon um, as soon as possible if they have the risk of falls. And we need something that very short and concise. Because again, currently, for example, the comprehensive assessment uh, in the clinical settings, we combine from several assessments. For example, we use the MMSA or MOCA, we use the time out and go, for example, we use the button in that. So it's actually from variety of assessments. But now we need to develop and find a very comprehensive, short and brief assessment to help the public. Okay. So the most important things with the uh, community false prevention and intervention is the caregivers. Okay. The caregivers plays an important role because the caregiver, uh, older persons in the in Malaysia being protected by their family members. Okay. The family members does not allow the older person to go out or to do lots of uh, activities because they afraid them to fall. Maybe it is a good thing or maybe it become a bad thing. Okay. Because once again, it not just look about the falls, but the impact of falls has developed towards decrease in the quality of life, decrease in functional activities of daily living. And this aspect actually being encouraged by the caregivers if they do that. So involving active participation of the caregivers in training their parents is one of the important thing. Okay. Last but not least, I think the healthcare professionals. We are the team that really needs to push forward this agenda. Okay. We need to actually educate the other healthcare practitioners to help to train, for example, the caregivers to do um, the assessment and to train for the exercise and also to lobby for the policymakers in spending their money for pulse prevention and intervention. Another thing, if you look in the map, actually it's about the urban area. How about the non-urban area? A study okay in Kelantan actually looking about this they look um, in the three different population in the clan in Kelantan people who are living in the community their own home people who are living in Pondo okay because you know right some of the um, community they develop their own uh, not uh, house but settlement okay where the older persons can live there but not purposely for the health benefit, but for, um, for the aspect, for example, religious study, okay, for example, uh, social life, that's their focus, okay. It's, it's not really a retirement village, but they do it in a traditional way, so a pondo. And another thing is people who live in the elderly center, okay, care center. They found out people in the, that traditional, uh, settlement, the Pondo, and also in the elderly care centers has high chance to fall, okay? Really high chance to fall, okay? They, they more than 30% fa um, fall in the elderly center and around 20 plus percent falls in the um, Pondo, okay? Traditional settlement. Just 19.7% falls in their own home, okay? But again, when we look into the uh, false prevention, there are contemporary giant, uh, geriatrics giant, which is the frailty, scarcopenia, anorexia of aging, and also cognitive impairment. This also brings a challenge for us to explain to clients, either the family members or the older persons. And we need to also cater this to make them really understand that actually to prevent false, not only we are looking about false, but we are looking from the several aspects, but false is the important outcome. So the recommendation we can do from here, actually, we need to do, as I said before, 
some comprehensive assessment that can involve physical capacity, functional aspects, home environment, nutrition and co cognitive capacity that really uh, public friendly. Maybe it can be done by the family members or even the older persons. Okay, And this has been done, for example, in Australia. They do this, okay? They do a manual, okay? And the housing uh, ministry doing it, and they put it in their web page where the older person and also the family members can download it. And they, they can do it, okay? Well, uh, after they do it, they can bring it to their GP and um, ask for some consultation, okay? And we need to look about doing some exercise that are really home-based. They are really practical in their home that will reduce the non-adherence rate. Okay, So one of it, we need to train the caregivers. We need to train caregivers, for example, a study in Thailand. They show um, when they train the volunteers in a village, it increases the quality of life and well-being of the older person even though it not really significantly able to reduce falls but some risks of falls are able to be managed okay another thing is we need to look there is a separation between our clinic skill setting and also our community setting there are no transition follow-up between these two because lack of staff in the community clinics and the community clinics people are also being trained under the medical model okay for example there are uh, lack of therapies in the community setting okay and even if they have therapies over there the therapies not really based on the social model so whatever being trained in the hospital also being applied in the clinical actually uh, people, healthcare practitioners who are in the clinic, uh, community clinics, they need to have a bigger role. Their role is more towards the public health and also towards the prevention. And this actually can reduce the gap between the clinics and the community. Where they need, for example, to do the home visit uh, to the patient's home and then the follow up from over there and train at their own real environmental context okay another thing is really improve uh, starts to gain interest is about telehealth okay I, i'm trying to looking about the telehealth uh, it's very interesting thing where we can use uh, skype for example now we have the google meet as a medium for us to follow up with our clients at their home and train them in their own uh, environment and this hopefully we can also uh, influence the policymakers to help to focus on safer house and safer neighborhood policy. Because, um, for example, as I said before, the, the standard guideline, uh, universal uh, guideline for doing a home, for example, is not applicable to all, um, all, all people, okay? Even for the normal, healthy, older person. So we need to have something that really can make the older person or the family members to customize whatever happened in their home to be more safe for the older person. Okay. But um, as I said before, we need to train them um, in their home environment, okay? Because they, when they go to the community, it's very difficult for us to follow up with them and it's very difficult for us to observe them there are several uh, for example in australia there are several approach or uh, a program being developed towards that first one is is the stepping on being developed by lindy clemson okay and the second one is life program also being developed by lindy clemson and lindy clemson actually my co-sb okay where the stepping on is more on the comprehensive um, aspect where it involves about the ability even for the older persons to review their own risks, okay? And then to develop an exercise program and how to move safely and what happened, for example, when they fall, 
what they need to do. Do not panic when they fall, okay? They need to calm, okay? They need to uh, take their time, okay? Need to move around, uh, sorry, I uh, need to uh, try to get up from the falls, okay? And if not possible, okay, need to contact the persons that really um, can help them. So that stepping on program really look into a very comprehensive aspect, but the life program is one of the interesting program, okay? Both program reduce 30% of false rate in the, uh, for the people in the community, okay? Where the life program, they integrate the exercise in the daily living activities. It's not really difficult. For example, when they do dishes, okay? Washing the dishes, okay, in the kitchen, they need to lift up one leg for five seconds and then change another leg. So their time is not waste where they can do their own activities of daily living and in the same time they can do the exercise. They do not have uh, to think about two separate time. Okay. Another thing, for example, what they can do, okay, for example, when they walk in the um Ruang tamu, okay, living room. So they need to walk it tiptoeing, okay, just at that area, at that particular time, for example, in the afternoon, okay. So this, even with the simple technique, okay, has helped the older person reduce falls, increase their muscle strength, and increase their functional performance. 